Greetings, one and all, to Dream Slayer Studios' premiere episode of the classic TSR Marvel RPG live play of our campaign entitled Iroshan, Gods and Monsters. We'll be playing this campaign via Zoom over the coming months, as all of my players are scattered across the U.S. and Mexico. Although we are all spread apart, this particular group of misfits are old high school buddies of mine, and one of my original RPG groups from when I first started playing years ago. All of the player characters in this game are our original characters based on ourselves as superheroes that we created when we were in high school back in the late 1980s. So before we begin, I thought it would be a good idea to give you, the viewer, a little breakdown of the team as a whole and introduce you to the players and their individual characters. My name is Chris Tyner, and I will be acting as the GM of the game. When we created these characters way back when, I was the team leader of Iroshan, known as the Dream Slayer. Iroshan stands for Investigative Researchers of Supernatural Happenings and Nightmares, and our little band came about after the events of Inferno in the pages of the X-Men when a portal to Limbo opened up under our high school in Evansville, Indiana. After defeating a horde of demons at our school, we banded, banded together to help others in need of assistance who were plagued by bad dreams and other supernatural threats. Over the years, as my friends moved away, Iroshan had an ever-changing roster until the mid-2000s when we finally resolved the game. Recently, though, my original gaming group got back together through the magic of the internet and began playing The Great American Novel by Christopher Gray, an excellent role-playing game in its own right, and one that we also rec recorded for posterity's sake. I'll put the link of, to the first episode of that down in the links below. The title of our great uh, American novel was Devil's Canyon. It's a real blast, and I hope you check it out, and be sure to check out Christopher Gray's game. It can be purchased at drivethroughrpg.com. I highly recommend it. So, out of Devil's Canyon, everyone expressed a desire to revisit the old Marvel game, and I had the first campaign formatted within a week, and now here we are. So, now to break down the characters and the players. As I mentioned, my character is Dream Slayer, and over the years he's had multiple run-ins with the Hand and Nightmare from the Marvel U, and has carved out his own section of Nightmare's realm that he calls the Dreaming. And yes, that's certainly a nod to DC's Sandman. He's a master of martial arts and a follower of the Way of the Samurai. He and his wife, Phantasm, have taken over the Lords as Lords of the Dreaming, and haven't been as actively involved in Iroshan over the more recent years since setting up shop in Nightmare's Realm and are a bit out of touch with the goings-on in the main Marvel U, doing their best to protect humanity from the machinations of Nightmare and other invaders from that realm. My good friend Mike is playing Spartan. Spartan discovered a strange meteor meteorite way back when he was in high school, the origins of which are still unknown to this day. When he came into contact with the glowing rock, he was imbued with the power of vibration. Over the years, however, his powers were in a state of constant flux. But he had an urge that was eating at his bones through the vibrations of the earth itself, and those vibrations were calling him east. He gathered up his family and all of his earthly belongings and moved to where the vibrations were the most resonant, Montpelier, Vermont. It was here that where he felt the most in tune with the powers that were granted to him upon the discovery of that meteor so many years ago back home in Indiana. As the weeks passed in this new town, the call to nature was reinvigorated in him and he found himself spending more and more time hiking and biking through the forests that surrounded his home, resulting in a more intense connection to Mother Earth, and he saw his powers grow exponen exponentially. This in turn led to a discovery of both self and of his true origins, for within the wilderness hills of his newfound home he discovered a series of ancient cairns hidden away from prying eyes. Nine cairns in total that he quickly discovered had been built by the first visitors to the New World, the ancient Nordic Vikings. Whatever their original purpose, Spartan is unaware, but he has been able to translate some of the faded markings in these structures that correlate to the mythology of the ancient North Norse legends. 
Dana is playing Shard, who came into her powers during the Emmetsville Inferno. She has spent as much time in her pocket dimension of Limbo as she has on Earth. Over the years, she has formed a tree with the ruler of Limbo, the X-Man known as Magic, and younger sister of the powerhouse Colossus. Her once little corner of Limbo, she lovingly dubbed Wonderland, has grown to the size of a small continent, about the size of Great Britain, and she rules as its mistress. Her lifelong connection to her sister, Poet, has strengthened as the years have flown by. And while her mundane life centers around her family in Missouri, she often finds herself using her mirror portals to find time to share the arcane knowledge that she has finessed in Wonderland with fledgling apprentices at Poet's branch of the Strange Academy in Chicago. Christy plays Poet, a mutant with similar power set to the Scarlet Witch, with the ability to alter reality with the recitation of her prose. As a member of Irish Hand, she had many dealings with the Sorcerer Supreme, Dr. Stephen Strange. When the Scarlet Witch nearly obliterated the mutant race with three words, no more mutants, it was actually Poet that Dr. Strange called upon to help reverse the spell. But Poet never accepted the credit for her good deed. In fact, she flipped the script to show that she was never involved in the first place, not out of fear, but out of compassion for her fallen sister-in-arms, the Scarlet Witch. She knew her road to redemption would be a tough one, and the world needed to think that it was she that had undone her own spell. A trusted agent of Doctor Strange, he has placed Poet in place as the headmistress of his Chicago branch of Strange Academy, where she trains a new batch of young, aspiring magicians. Andy is the cloak-wearing weapons master known as Arsenal. Arsenal was the first member of Irish Hand to lay down his cape. After many adventures leading into his mid-twenties, he found the love of his life and settled down as a family man, raising a fine young son and educating the youth of his hometown. His magical cloak had always been a mystery to him, tattered and torn from the moment he picked it up, but late at night, whenever he isn't under the watchful eye of the Lord of the Dreaming, he can hear the cloak calling for him from its safe hiding place at Iroshan HQ in downtown Evansville. He often sees himself on horseback in the early days of the New World. He sees witches, warlocks, and demons, headless horsemen, vampires, and werewolves. Kurt plays the telepath Psyghost, who always believed that the power that resided within him was a connection to both the Phoenix Force and the Dark Force dimension. But there was something else behind those mysterious powers he held within his mutant brain. A literal Dark Force known as the Void. Yes, this is the same void that tormented the world's most powerful superhero, the superhero that was erased from the memories of his admirers and friends known as the Sentry. When Earth's knowledge of the Sentry was erased, the void attached itself to the mind of a newborn in southern Indiana and incubated, waiting to usurp control over the, the soon-to-mature mutant. When Kurt's telepathic abilities emerged, the Void slowly enhanced his abilities and granted some of his own power to him so that one day he could control him as he had the Sentry. However, before total assimilation could be achieved, the Sentry returned to his full power and knowledge of his own past, and the Void couldn't resist abandoning his current host to once again embrace the power of a million suns. This left Kurt nearly powerless until, inevitably, the Sentry succumbed to the Void, embracing the evil within and then being cast into the sun himself. Unfortunately, a sliver of the Void survived, and he rejoined his failed experiment, and Psyghost once again is in an ongoing war for his soul and his sanity. And finally, we have Jeff as the sports hero and darling of the L.A. scene, Kicksave. After leaving Evansville, Kicksave went on to become a superstar international soccer champion, the first superhero to openly play in the USMNT. He went on to work as a producer in Hollywood and became a reserve member of the West Coast Avengers and headed up promotions for Stark Industries on the West Coast. He rubs elbows with the Hollywood elite and stays in contact with old pals Hawkeye, Hercules, and Moon Knight. And that's our team. A few more things before we begin. I'm a member of the Facebook group known as the Unofficial Canon Project listed in the links below and where I am sure some of you actually discovered this video. Please, if you are interested in seeing how the fan base has carried on over the years, come and check us out. 
Many of us have created new compendiums and adventures for the game, and our goal is to make them in the same vein as the original game and updating them for a new generation of fans. I've written or been a part of over a dozen books myself, and all of the books the members have been working on over the past few years can be found there. Big thanks to my fellow moderators and admins for letting me post our live plays here on the Facebook page. Also, I'm a longtime director of the stage, and during the recent pandemic, I was trying to figure out a way to get my students involved in a production since we couldn't hold a live performance. My answer was to come up with a four-part horror serial podcast that we've entitled The Loft, and it's available for download on iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, and other podcast outlets across the internet. I have posted the iTunes link down below for your convenience. I hope you enjoy our live play of the classic Marvel RPG. Be sure to like and subscribe. Excelsior! <laughs> All right, so I guess we'll get started. Do you guys have any questions before we do begin about anything? I don't <laughs> yeah. think so. I'm, I'm sure. That, I'm sure questions will come up as as we go. Yeah, and I can help guide you through any issues that we have. You know, through the through the rolling process. Andy, you were going to say something. Oh, I was just going to say, how, how do we play this again? Because <laughs> it's only been 30 years since I've done it. So. It's like riding a bike. Uh, okay. All right. <laughs> Obviously, I haven't, you haven't seen me physically in person for a while. You know I don't ride a bike very often. <laughs> um, Andy, did you print off the uh, the chart on the back of the thing? Okay, good. Yep. Yeah. So yep. that, that's going to be your, your go-to uh, for just about everything. And when it comes time to, you know, make roles and so forth, I'll help guide you through that process. You just kind of tell me what it is that you think you want to do, and then I'll, I'll tell you what to roll. Okay. Well, then it would just be like high school. All right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I'm going to start off with the little prologue here that I've written to kind of get us into uh, where we are currently. Uh, and this will be the one and only time where your characters really won't be able to react really to what's going on. Uh, but this will at least set the scene and set you on your path, <clears throat> excuse me, set you on your path uh, to the adventure. So I'm going to uh, read that and then uh, just kind of turn it over to you guys to decide what to do uh, after you hear what has happened. So here we go. You find yourselves on a small island, in a beautiful field of knee-high pompous grass with the wind blowing gently, causing the grass to rustle beneath you, with a sound that seems almost as though it's whispering to you. Ahead of you, in the distance, there is a hill with a tall rock formation that leads up to a small Japanese shrine, and a single, solitary cherry blossom tree in full bloom that cascades over the ancient structure like a protective umbrella. The ocean waves crash in the distance and you feel compelled to make your way to the top of the hill. In the distance, you see several other figures making the same journey. Though the hill is steep and the rocks are somewhat precarious after a recent rainfall, you are able to make it up the hill with relative ease. In front of the shrine, there is a lone figure seated in meditation in front of an altar bearing a katana and a wakazashi. You are joined by the other figures as you approach and discover the faces of old friends from across the years, former compadres and teammates from your time as a part of the investigative researchers of supernatural happenings and nightmares, Iroshan. Although the years may have separated some of you, these faces bring you comfort, for you know there are certain bonds that can never be broken, and the bond of friendship, these friends in particular, is eternal. As you approach, you can see by the colors he wears, the individual who is in deep meditation is another key member of your former entourage. It is the master of the dreaming, the warrior known as Dream Slayer, or as you prefer to call him, Chris Tyner. He is not startled by your presence, but his reaction is 
not quite that which you would have hoped for. It's not that he's not glad to see you, but he has the look of concern on his face as his eyes flutter open. He addresses the crowd gathered at the shrine as a tear runs down his face. Oh, oh no. You really aren't supposed to be here. Oh, my friends, I am so sorry. Whatever happens to me, you need to promise that you won't seek retribution. There's no time for me to explain, and even if there, if, if there was, I wouldn't do it. But there is something that you can do for me and for Kelly. And when the moment comes, I trust that you will know what to do. No matter what has happened over the years, the mistakes that we've made, the missteps, know this. I love you all. And with this parting phrase, you hear a creaking sound and the swift rustle of chains as the beautiful cherry blossom tree turns black and erupts with a sickening groan and spews forth half a dozen hook-ended chains that pierce the flesh of your former leader and companion, ripping him asunder in a torrent of blood and gore. And then you wake. So you wake up wherever you happen to be uh, in your own bed and uh, just drenched in sweat. And you feel uh, the, the energy that was coming off of Dream Slayer. Uh, and you know that you were in his realm. You were in the dream realm uh, when that happened. Uh, and with your experience in working with him off and on over the years, you know that when something happens there, a lot of times it is very reflective of what actually may have happened in the real world or may have happened there in his realm. Um, so this is certainly a, a shocking discovery, uh, especially for those of you that maybe haven't seen each other uh, in such a long time. So you are now in your individual cities, wherever you happen to be. Uh, and uh, so I now leave it to you to decide what it is that, uh, what your reaction is to this dream. Well, I, I imagine we should, um probably get together right that you know if, if everyone was as as shaken by that um let's um give give people a call let's um let's let's set you know well i'll, I'll contact everybody and, and we'll set up a zoom meeting to, <laughs> to discuss the uh the events so um i'll i'll set that up and um hey guys did you did you um ex experience hey, th this this thing that that i did um that seems pretty uh it wasn't the the run of the mill bad dream um did did you guys have that same experience yes and to be quite honest i don't know what to think of it yeah it's i mean it's been some time since we um we're, we're all together in that place that that seems seems significant to me i i don't think they'll appreciate it but i i you know i kind of have a tendency to think we need to go back to the chris's parents house when they lived over off of petersburg but i really don't <laughs> think those people are going to enjoy a whole bunch of strangers invading their home well maybe not um but i wonder Honestly, it's been so long, I can't really exactly remember everybody's powers, but I, I know that um, either Dana or Christy can can probably get us to Dream Slayer's space or, or, or close. Is it, Can you guys do that? I can teleport to somebody, but I can't take anybody else. Dana, Christy, what you got? Um, 
dimensional travel limbo on Earth. So yeah, I will um, open up some portals with my mirrors and uh, we can meet either in my limbo world realm or we can go somewhere, maybe a hot spot. Is there a hot spot like Andy was saying that you know, maybe we should go back to his old home. We need to go somewhere that he's connected to maybe. Now, Andy, you um, have been living in the area for quite some time, would have retired probably in your mid to late twenties, probably from adventuring. And part of that retirement was because you, this cloak <clears throat> that you had, uh, which we are now calling the highwayman cloak um, was, <sighs> there was a certain corruption to it and you did, you never really felt comfortable, I think, um, wearing Boy. the cloak for long periods of time. Is that what, is that what made me fat? <laughs> it may have been. <laughs> is that, God dang it. Take <laughs> all the cloak these, off all for these God's years. sake. <laughs> <laughs> I think just taking the cloak off and leaving it might have just done that to you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Some of it, I'm going to need to find that cloak. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, when you gave the cloak up, you ended up putting it in what we called the vault uh, at Iroshan headquarters. Now, when we were in high school, the headquarters was located uh, at the old um, uh, Sunset Drive-In, if you remember that. Mm -hmm. And uh, eventually, as time went on, Welburn Hospital ended up shutting down, and the uh, the group, as it uh, transferred from hand to hand and so forth, and the membership changed, we ended up moving to the old Welburn Hospital. Uh, and then updating it to our purposes and taking the vault then with us. Now the vault is a uh, kind of digital um, storage area. So it basically digitizes anything or anyone uh, and places them or it, the item in there for safekeeping. Uh, so for you right now, all the rest of them have powers you do not. Ah, uh, okay. So okay. your your cloak is located there at Irishan. Alrighty. Which is just out of curiosity, is it the old person's home that it is today? No. Uh -uh. Okay. No, okay. That, that, <laughs> it's like, uh, am I going to fight Fred? The <laughs> the whole complex there is uh, is Irishan. Uh, okay. So there's there is a okay. new new group of Irishan led by someone else. Dream Slayer had, uh, he still has contact with them and still assists whenever, you know, they need help, especially in the, in the dream world, but he has uh, given up his leadership uh, and has basically been living in the dreaming for probably about the last decade. Okay. Okay. Uh, well, in that, in, in that case, I am going to make my way to Irishman headquarters so I can retrieve the highwayman. And then the rest of you, are you all just kind of gathering uh, and just, Dana, you're just kind of picking people up through your mirror portals? I'll do that. I don't think we had decided where we were going to go to. Anyone I, think, yeah. I think it does make sense to maybe head back to, to headquarters, at least, at least for a start. Um, okay. If there's anybody who needs a, a quick route there, I can um, supply a, a magic carpet because that, that nightmare was horrific, but it reminds me that I, I like to dream. Yes, yes, right between the sound machine on a cloud of sound, I drift. <laughs> Any place goes is right. So, you know, my friends come with me, uh, my friends on a magic carpet ride to Irishan. How do you think of that stuff on the spot? That's brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like Steppenwolf needs to be playing in the background. <laughs> we need a soundtrack. Yeah, I know. I, th I thought about trying to put something together, but, you know, copyright laws and all. <laughs> <laughs> and oftentimes when I do play live with folks, I have a soundtrack that goes with everything, so... <laughs> 
Um, okay, so Dana, you can be, uh, and I'm not going to make you roll uh, to pick everybody up. We'll just kind of take for granted that you're able to do that and, and go yeah. to individual spots, you know, and, and and pick Mike and Kurt up from where they are. Okay. Um, and in the meantime, Andy, you would have made it to uh, to Irishan. Uh, and when you get there, you notice that the old Welburn Hospital um, has, in a couple of window areas, it looks as though there is some smoke uh, coming out of the building. Okay. Out of the hospital? Uh, yeah. Well, uh, I guess I need to make my way around to the front just to see if I can access the building just through conventional means mm -hmm. versus going and investigating the open window. Yeah. When you go up to the front door uh, there on, uh, I think it's 4th Street, if I remember right, um, you see that there's like a, a touchpad, like for a palm print. And obviously, uh, go up and give it a shot. And... and you hear a voice that says, welcome, Arsenal. Oh, nice. All right. And the doors slide open for you. Okay. Um, go in. Front desk. Is there a front desk person? Uh, um, are, we, are we that level? Well, yeah, there's a, there's a front desk up there, and, and it usually has, like, an automated, like, hologram that usually greets people. It's all like fritzy and everything right now. Um, yeah, it's kind of fritzy right now. Okay. Uh, and looking down the hallway uh, that kind of runs down towards the elevators and so forth, uh, in typical horror movie fashion, the lights are flickering, you know, off and on uh, down the hallway. Uh, okay. And you do see kind of a, a thin layer of smoke that hangs high in the air up towards the ceiling. Okay. Um... So I'm going to make my way to the vault. Uh, in doing so, I'm going to stay pretty close to the wall. Mm -hmm. Just kind of hug the wall a little bit because I don't know what to expect. Okay. Um, do I pass a gathering room or any other kind of rooms from here? to? Uh, surely I would mm -hmm. between here and the vault. So yep. uh, do I notice anybody down? Yeah. As a matter of fact, as you as you go down the hallway uh, past the elevators, it kind of comes to a, uh, a, a crossroads there. And just down the hallway, kind of towards where the old ER was, uh, which is uh, kind of a training area uh, for, for the group, um, you see a couple of bodies in the hallway. Um, and you see uh, the current team leader, um, Silent One, uh, just laying there in the hallway uh, and directly across from him, the dark force manipulator known as Shadow Guys. And these are people that you probably would have met, you know, at one time or another. Um, okay. uh, and they're laying there in the hallway. Uh, and. There's blood uh, kind of spattered on the walls and pooling on the floor. Okay. Obviously go over and see if I can get a vital from them, see if they're conscious. Mm -hmm. uh, they do seem to still be breathing, yes. Okay. Um, not, not conscious. Not conscious. Okay. Okay. Um, all right. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make it, make my way past them. Again, trying to head to the vault because right now I'm, basically just a snake sneaking little fat guy running around this building <laughs> so uh so make my way to the vault see if i can enter the vault or at least pull up the archives for my cloak okay and on the way there you pass by several more uh fallen heroes from the team uh kate small uh also known as chimera um the husband and wife team, Elementa and Kodak. The winged eagle, Ink, the tattooed man that you all know as Mike Hancock. And one of the few remaining original members of the team, Chad Buttry, alias the Phantom. Okay. Uh, and, all, and all of them? 
there. Same condition. Same condition. Uh, okay. Not awake, uh, but beaten and or bloodied. Okay. Okay. Um, at this point, try to try to enter the vault. Okay. Uh, you get to the vault. It doesn't seem to be that there's anyone else here. Um, no one has come to try to stop you. Uh, you get to the vault. There's another palm pad there that um, you touch and it welcomes you once again with the same voice uh, access granted uh, and you're able to key in you know looking for your cloak and it is still there fortunately so you're able to retrieve it with uh, with little interference okay uh, and at this point then Dana you and the rest of the group uh, and Christy uh, should be arriving uh, at the front as well. Just out of curiosity, can mm -hmm. I take a roll for an intuition roll just to see if I pick up on anything that I might have just passed by, noticed, but didn't really pick up visually? Sure, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hold on, I got to find some dice. <laughs> Uh, oh yeah, and if you want, I can pull up the uh, roll twenty. Okay. If you want to roll there. Yeah, that's where it, that's where. It's only I've been looking. I've been looking yeah. for dice everywhere. I know I have some somewhere. And give me just a second here, and I will send you the link so you can get in. And I'm going to put it in the chat here in Zoom. There it is. While we're waiting for everybody to come in, I, I was really concerned when I met the silent one. I didn't really want to know what his superpower was. <laughs> <laughs> it's deadly. <laughs> <laughs> Now that's kind of turn your video off and stuff. It's in the settings to up on the upper right. Who is that? Huh? Is it me? You need to do that. Yeah. Oh, that's weird. So you go up to settings up in the upper right corner and you scroll all the way down. It says video and chat options. And you want to say, um, you want to turn all those off. I want to broadcast to others, nothing disabled. I want to receive from others nothing. We all should do this, actually. So, so where are you at? Uh, it's down in the up and see the upper corner where there's a little settings toolbar thing, little gear. And this is in row twenty. Yeah, when you click okay. on the. Oh, okay. Oh, you may have to launch the. You may have to go into the game first. It'll say like it'll take you to a page and then you go into the game. It'll say like launch game or something like that or enter. Yeah. Then you'll see when it, you'll see the map that he's put together and then you'll see. Okay. So enable. Yeah, change that picture. Okay. I think it was I think it must have been Andy's that was like that because I'm I'm not getting it now. Are are you hearing me echo again or no? No, now you're good. Okay. I'm not. How about how about me? Yep, you're good. I think it might have been you, Andy. I didn't. <laughs> okay, I didn't check anything. <laughs> oh, you didn't? No, no, huh, no. Okay. No, there was nothing. There was nothing there. I was looking, but I didn't see anything to uncheck. So. And I also find that like the avatars don't okay. really get in the way. So if you want to click on the setting and go to player video avatar size in the game settings and chat avatars and put names only, it gets rid of all those pictures, which really get in the way of the map. Yeah, I gotcha. Oh yeah. All right. Yeah, this is a nice map. I don't 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 sneak in there too much. <laughs> you can hide it all. Promise, you know that, right? What's that? You can hide it all and reveal it. Piece oh, okay. By piece. Okay. I'll, yeah, I'll do that. We'll do that later. Yeah, I'll keep that in mind for later. Oh. Why do I have all those die out there? <laughs> 
So D100 and I need two. There we go. There you go. So 66. 66. Now, if you will all recall that if you roll a 69, because <laughs> we were 12, <laughs> if you roll a 69 or a 100, if you roll three of those uh, during one session, at the end of that, you get a wish. I do recall that. <laughs> <laughs> little house rule. I don't, uh, I, I don't think I ever got a wish. <laughs> this is a fable at this point. So, okay. All right. So I was rolling for intuition. So, yes. so 66. If you look uh, at remarkable. 66 under remarkable. Yeah. That should be a green result, or is it a yellow? Uh, that is a green result. Okay. Oh, wait. Nope, it's a yellow. Oh, it's a yellow result. Just top yellow. Okay. Yep. So, yeah. The, was, um, if oh, I, were about to, I was about to do something very similar that might have helped out. Okay, what's that? To um, seeing the general disarray of the place and sensing that something's off. Um, I was going to say that water from the ceiling drips to quench the flames, disperse the smoke, lets us see beyond the veil of evil, perceive all danger or signs of hope. Okay, great, roll it. And that's gonna be under your uh, power set. <sighs> what that means. How many dice am I rolling? A <laughs> uh, uh, hundred-sided die, so uh, two um, ten-sided dice. Two and then just <laughs> determine which one is your high die. Nine. Uh, uh, you got a zero nine? I have nine and a two. A nine and a two. So since you're rolling there for yourself and not on the screen up there, you just have to determine which one of those is your high die. Oh, uh, okay. Okay. So the die will always be the high one. Okay. That one will always be the high one. Why don't I pick the higher number then? Sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> How convenient. <laughs> well done. One and okay. two. So you got a 92. And then if you look at your character sheet, then um, is it the reality alteration, I think? I need to pull your character ah, sheet up. Reality alteration, MN. Okay, so that's monstrous. So you're rolling on the monstrous column. Okay. So I can guarantee you that's a red. Yes. And specifically in the area where the fire is, nowhere else in the building, uh, the sprinkler system comes on and quenches the fire. Okay, so hopefully in conjunction with Arsenal's um, role, we are also able to see beyond the veil of evil and perceive um, danger or signs of hope. Right. And as far as danger goes, you, you do get the feeling that, you know, there was something very evil here recently, uh, but it has since uh, gone. Okay. Um, sorry, I'm just trying to find something here and it's not operating with me. Okay. Um, so anyway, that sense of evil is, is there, but it's distant, uh, it, but it's recent. Uh, so the rest of you are now standing outside of the building. Well, let's go try the door. See if we can get in the normal way before we bust through i guess all right who's gonna try the door you are dana try it all right so dana you walk up place your hand on the uh, uh on the pad and in the same voice it says welcome shard and the door opens <clears throat> he just likes using that voice <laughs> <laughs> all right i'm going in all right and the rest of you can go in with her you don't each have to place your hand on the pad Unless you just want to and, and make me say say it again. Oh, please I'm, do. Please I think do. I'm going to. I'm going to do it. Okay. <laughs> Welcome, Spartan. Thank you. 
welcome, <laughs> poet. Come on, Kurt. <laughs> Kurt. <laughs> Access denied. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I just leave my body outside and project my astral self in with them. You know? Okay. <laughs> um, so now you guys are all in the building. You see the same things that uh, that Andy saw uh, as he was going in. You see the bodies on the floor. They are non-responsive, uh, beaten, bloodied, and so forth. Andy, your role, let's get back to yours, what you did discover. Um, they all do seem to have uh, piercing wounds uh, on them. Um, some of some of them appear to have bruising around the throats as well as though they have been choked um, and so forth. And in, in with the yellow result that you that you got with your investigative role, uh, your best bet or inkling on this is that especially those that have been choked, seems as though the bruising is in a pattern of like chains. Um, and the piercing uh, on their bodies is reminiscent of potentially like being ripped out like with hooks. Okay. Interesting. Okay. And then you hear some noises coming from the, uh, from the front lobby down the hallway. At this point, I'm going to get my cloak because I don't know what's coming. <laughs> so I retrieve the cloak. Do I need to roll for that or is that a, just a... Uh, you can just put that on. Put that on. All right. So I got that on. And again, staying close to the wall, I'm going to make my way back to see if I can peek around and see who's coming the other way. And once you get that cloak on, you feel... That power uh, cut back into you, and and all of a sudden you're you're very fit once again. <laughs> okay, just rub it in now. <laughs> all right. So, um, like I said, at this point, uh, you know what? I'm gonna reach in and just pull out a simple staff. See if I can pull out a simple staff. Okay. Um, so let's see here. I'm gonna have to roll for that guy. Why did I keep getting three die? Four now I'm getting four die. What's going on here? So 84. 84 yeah. Which it should be. And that's probably a yellow at least. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. it's re it's remarkable. It's uh what would that be under fighting? No, that's going to be under your. Give me one second. Let me get your sheet up here. Oh, resources, right? No, that's going to no. be a uh, monstrous ability to produce a weapon from inside your cloak. So that's under the highwayman cloak power. Oh, okay. So it's on the monstrous. Okay. So, oh, there it is. Okay, so yeah, that's that's easily uh, uh, that's yeah, it's easily yellow. It's a deep yellow. Okay. So I obviously got staff. Go down the hallway again, staying close to the wall, seeing if I can see what's making that noise. Sure, you I come guess. down to the the corner there uh, at that intersection, and kind of peek around just a little bit, and you see four figures down the hallway, uh, and they're dressed in a manner that is very reminiscent of, reminiscent of some old friends of yours. Okay. Uh, slowly walk up. Are they backs toward me or are they walking toward me? Uh, probably walking towards. Okay. Uh, I yell out, hey, what are you guys, are you guys real? Because I haven't seen you guys in 30 years. So. I think we're as real as we get. Um. Oh really? Oh what really? tape what tape did we listen to on the way to lunch? <laughs> uh I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but it but it was in the red Mustang too. Oh, there you go. All right, all right. Uh well that'll pa that pass. <laughs> so what are you guys doing? Uh we, you know, are headed down 
to meet up with you. And did, did you guys have the same dream I had? We did. Okay. So I immediately came here and the first thing I did was when I was walking through, I checked things out. Um, you know, I noticed that these guys all seem to be choked out with a chain. Uh, also, it looks like any kind of the blood is coming from wounds that look like a ripping motion had occurred. Um, I don't so, know if that was part of a chain or, or what the deal is. So not, not unlike what, what we all saw happen to Tyner in our, our mutual dream. Yeah, something somewhere. So uh, there's, there's a connection there then. I would, I would think so. Uh, the, the, what, what really is weird in my, in my opinion is why they would come and attack these guys. If Chris, you know, we haven't, we haven't really seen these, this group of, uh, Irish leaders and, or, you know, players for a long time, uh, <laughs> if at all. So I don't know what would link them other than Chris. I don't know what link them to us. Yeah. I mean, unless it's, you know, just some sort of vengeance against the, the organization for, you know, something a long time ago or something that they've done since, you know, or it could all, it could all relate back to Chris and just right. somebody's going after him. So therefore he, they're going after everybody around him until we saw the dream we saw thinking that he's taken everybody out, not knowing that we were still out in the, you know, out doing our thing. Sure. Um, what better way to get us all together in the same place? <laughs> right. <laughs> At we the fell for time, it. right? <laughs> <laughs> Those rascally kids. <laughs> With what Andy just mentioned about the wounds and the and the damage to the current Iroshan roster, does that ring any bells to anyone? Um. Well, I, I had the thought. Um, there was there was a an entity that we dealt with a lot back in the day named Seth, um, and I don't remember much about him beyond that. But Man. he was he was bad news, and I, I know that uh, he and Chris had a particular negative link. And um, I just I just you know that's the first thing that comes to mind to me. Mm -hmm. And Shard and Poet probably would have had other run-ins uh, in particular with that entity. And I would say that Poet, knowing the energy that you feel, you know, surrounding you right now with the role that you got, doesn't seem like Seth. Yeah, but, it's, but it does seem familiar. Um, hey, Jeff, can you, can you join us on video or no? Um, we'll continue on. He just sent a text, uh, in the chat there. So hopefully he can join us. Yeah, I don't, gosh, I don't remember anybody, <laughs> <laughs> uh, that we faced back in the day. Uh, um, how many of you have occult lore as a talent? That's not me. Trivia is as close as I get. <laughs> <laughs> I have it. You do? Okay. Do. Are you the, the only one, Christy? You don't? I don't. Okay. All right. So, Dana, it's all on you. <laughs> so, I'm thinking really hard and I'm rifling through the files in my head and I think I, sorry, <laughs> you hear that? <laughs> Is that what it sounds like in your head? <laughs> head. It's about to explode. <laughs> yes. <laughs> sorry, that's my roommate here. Um, <clears throat> I, I, I go to my mind palace and I, I rifling through the files and I, I think, oh, this seems familiar. And what is it, Chris? <laughs> okay, uh, you're going to need to roll reason. Okay. All right, so. And perhaps call karma. 
Okay, I'm gonna roll two dice. My purple Say one. Say karma. Is... Wait. Karma. Is it the ugly stick clan? <laughs> Not that's the, that's the only one I remember. <laughs> my brain is mush. I don't remember any of it. Okay. Okay, so my high die is a three, my low die is a zero. Okay, and then your reason is karma. what? Oh, what is my reason? I don't see it. Where is that? I'm sorry. Uh, it's uh, F A S E R, so it's the R. Oh, for reason. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's G D. Is that good? Good. Yeah. Okay. And, so. and I called Karma. All right. So you got a a white, but adding your karma to that, you can bump it up to a 46. So however many you need to spend to get it up to the 46, you're gonna subtract that from your karma. Okay, from my, okay. Mm -hmm. I'm trying here. And don't forget that you have the extra 150 karma points on top <laughs> of your regular karma. I have 255 karma. Okay. And then, okay, so. I rolled a what I roll a 30. I'm sorry, this is math live on camera. <laughs> <laughs> I think you said 33, if I remember correctly. I got a 30. Oh, 30. Okay. 30 and then uh good. And it's uh my reason is 10. So and my 16 is 255. All right, so you just need to spend 16 to get you up to the green. All right, do it. And just for the record, if you do call karma, even if yeah. you make the roll and you succeed, you still have to spend 10 karma points just for calling karma, okay? Oh, I'm actually spending 26. 26? Total then, right? No, 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 uh -uh. no, you, you have to spend at least 10. Okay. Uh, but if you succeed or, or if you didn't succeed or whatever, you yeah. spend enough to get you up to the next color. So it's just 16. That was 16. Okay, good. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. So with that, um, and you kind of kneel down and take a look at, at one of the bodies up a little bit closer and maybe with that little additional, uh, poem that uh, that Christy had recited you know you get that feeling of of something that you all had faced at one point during your early days of Iroshan and um it it, it reminds you uh of the the chains were kind of indicative of the demons known as Cenobites and the chains were a calling card for their leader, the one known as Pinhead. Like Cinnabites, like in like little cinnamon bites? <laughs> no, like Hellraiser. Oh, I, <laughs> like I, I do like Cinnabites with like a little small marshmallow. <laughs> <laughs> and the Cinnabite hail from a region of hell uh, ruled by an entity known as Leviathan. It's a land of incalculable horrors and carnal pleasures. And there's only one way to access this realm with a mystical item known as Le Marchand's box or the lament configuration, which Andy, when you were going through the process of retrieving your cloak, uh, you remember seeing Le Marchand's box on the list of things that were in the vault. and. Okay. Mike, you might now recall too that that was one of the early uh, pieces that we had retrieved and and set in there way back in the late eighties. I'm just glad I didn't open it by mistake. <laughs> <laughs> so the Marshawn box. Is it sad that I have to write these things down so I can remember them for the next conversation that we have? Okay, that's good. Uh, we should probably go get that. <laughs> the box? Yeah. Oh, we, do, do we know what it does? Yeah, I think I think you do, Andy. I, I, I seem to remember there was a, a time that we had... 
uh, faced off against these creatures uh, when we were playing long ago. But I mean, the box itself, do we have the the wherewithal to know how to operate it or is it just a hey open me no it's kind of you it's it's a puzzle box that you do have to solve oh dang puzzle box puzzle puzzle like a rubik's cube except worse <laughs> <laughs> except it opens all sorts of demons and, you right. know and cinnamon bites <laughs> mm. <laughs> All right. Well, I guess we need to go get the, the box out of the vault. Yeah. So, um, should should we also should we offer any of any of our fallen comrades some medical attention? <laughs> yeah, does, was, anybody, does anybody know any medical? <laughs> they're just like hanging out. I was I was gonna right, check, gonna check on people and get them to where they need to go. I don't know if that's the hospital or if that's. Maybe a um, superhero uh, hospital, a special place to put them. So, yeah, Irish Inn headquarters actually does have like a medical bay there, uh, so you should be able to get them there. Okay. I'll start doing that. But does any of us have medical training? You may not need it. Uh, you know, if you can get them to the medical bay, it will probably do the work for you. Oh, sweet. Okay. okay. <laughs> All right. So Shard and I can take people to the medical because there's several down, right? So yep. we can start willing people up there if you guys want to go retrieve the box. We'll meet you yep. down at the vault. All right. So um, while they're doing that, I guess we can head up to the uh, the vault and type in La Marchand's box mm -hmm. and did grab it. Okay. Yep. You're able to type it in, uh, access it, and then it forms uh, on the pad in front of you. Uh, and I didn't think to actually get that. Are you familiar with what it looks oh, like? Forms or a representation of the box forms? The box forms. Yeah. Um, I, re I, I think I remember but, what it looks like. But really, it can't be the true box because you deatomized it, stored it digitally, and then now you're putting it back together. So <laughs> it's really a digital copy of the true box. Star Trek nerd. Has it lost any fidelity, though? Like, does it still work? <laughs> Got an arm sticking out of the side. <laughs> <He's> like, <laughs> All right, I'm going to do a share screen here. Okay, so do you see that? Oh, oh yeah. <clears throat> so that is it right there. Is this an elaborate way of asking us to get this for you for Christmas? <laughs> you know, I actually used to have one of those. <laughs> I think I sold it at a uh, rummage sale or something one one year. <laughs> so I passed the curse on to somebody else. <laughs> um, okay, so you've got the box. Uh, the rest of you are kind of helping to get the others to the medical bay. Um, and... Why don't, is, Dana, since you are kind of the one that is that kind of decided to really start jumping in and, and helping these folks, why don't you roll a reason feat for me? And you don't have any medical background or anything like that, right? Hmm. I can dance, yeah. <laughs> apparently. No. <laughs> uh, martial arts literature, lots of trivia. Nope magical stuff okay 78 okay and that is r for reason again mm -hmm. which is good at 10 mm -hmm. so it'll probably put you in the yellow probably i'll have to yep that's a yellow on my computer so uh so one thing that you're noticing as you're as you're taking these people down to the med med lab 
is they are more than just unconscious. Um, and, you know, in trying to rouse them, trying to wake them up, you know, you try to do everything that you can to try to, you know, talk to one of them during this process. None of them seem to be waking up. So is it like a coma or maybe they're in some sort of deep, deep sleep? Could be one of one I, of those. Could kind of get into those, their minds and take a look. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you could do that. You want me to tell you? Huh? You want me to, you all want me to tell you what's going on? You want me to jump in there? Jump in. Do your thing. All right. I'll take one of them at a time. Let's do, let's do one. That'll probably tell us the whole group. Mm -hmm. So who do I start with? So you're I doing have, telepathy I mean, on Monstrous. On Monstrous? All mm -hmm. right. Let's do this. Okay. Is it 1D100 or 2? Uh, 1D100. That didn't work. Roll 1D1. I'm, I like doing the formula. There we go. 20. That's not going to be good. I should have said something. Huh? Uh, karma. Karma. <laughs> yeah. Karma. Oh, it's a, oh, geez. Look, I would have made it with just a little bit, too. No. Uh, no, wait, wait, wait. I'm monstrous, right? Am I monstrous? You're oh, monstrous, yeah. Oh, so close to getting to green. Oh, you can. Yeah. You, I, like I said, you you, you caught right. yourself there. So you can, you can call your. The, hey, call me. I'll do karma. Karma. Yeah. All right, so that puts you in the green. You just spend 10 points, and that, that puts you where you need to be. Oh, good Lord. Thank God. When and go wrong, really go wrong. All right. Reaching into their minds, um, you're having difficulty making contact. Um, what you see there, truthfully, is a blank slate. It's almost as though their soul has been ripped from their bodies. Mm -hmm. Oh, Mike. They have brain cloud. <laughs> yeah, these guys just aren't present, everybody. It looks like either they're in another plane or their very essence has been taken out of them. Well, that's no good. Um, no, not good at all. And, then, and medical treatment will do nothing for them, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Maybe we can at least leave them in the medical bay so that their physical bodies can be healing while we see what we can do about everything else um, I guess we should um, I mean sh should we just go straight at it and try to try to get this box working or do we need to do we need okay. to do something else here first <laughs> to, does anybody have a seem, seems a little rash right now I, you hurt know. conjure why don't we try to get in touch with Tyner um because I mean, he contacted us through the through our dreams, so he must be in his dream state. We must just got to be a way to contact him, right? Or uh, try to reach out to him. He he was ripped apart though, in his own yeah, dream I, in I his say, own dream it, state. It, so. it depends on real if that was some kind of permanent thing or if that was just a, a, a like a a dream slayer bat signal to us. It's it's hard to know. Why else would we have all had the same dream? That's what I was thinking. Maybe who's, but he did say we weren't supposed to be there. I, it wouldn't hurt to look. I think, if 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 you well, can get us, if you can get us there, we can divide and conquer this one. If we can, maybe a couple of people go after, but we still have to solve the puzzle cube. Don't split the party, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Let's break up into three groups. <laughs> I'm heading to Latvia right now. <laughs> Scooby and I, Scooby and I, will take this all this, the way. This, this way. box appears to be Chinese. So, somebody send me to China. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, Let's stick together. It's safer. All right, I'm good, yeah. good with that. Well, I have clairvoyance. Anyone else have any? I don't know if that will. Maybe if we go somewhere that is connected very deeply to Tyner, then we can reach out to him. If anyone else has any other way to reach out. Uh, question is how, you know, I don't, I'm not quite sure what monstrous is. Let's see. I probably couldn't do it without some device. What are you trying to do? 
find you. Oh, okay. We're trying to reach out to you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like if I was in, if I was at uh, Charles Xavier's place, I could probably do it. But I don't think I can be much help without without uh, what's the thing called? Cerebro. Cerebro. Mm -hmm. I, I would need my. I would need to magnify it. Unless I'm nearby. Unless he's nearby. Can we try to um, access his dream world or dream state rather than trying to find him specifically? Go to the place instead. Dana, you do have kind of a back door to the dreaming in in limbo uh, okay. that, that was in your character description sorry <laughs> okay let's do that let's go um into my limbo realm and we will reach out there if that's okay with everyone but do we want do we want to take this box with us because i, I can just we should I mean, leave this, it here I think I think we should keep keep it safe. We could we could taking keep it a, taking it right to the bad guy. Yeah. Doesn't anybody have a backpack or something that we could put it in? <laughs> a fanny pack. Well, I I, I can I, you know what I can I, I can pack. I can place it inside the cloak that I have, which will teleport yeah. it to my pocket. Why don't you do oh. that? Okay. Good that sounds good. This get up has no pockets. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> dang, yeah, this, dang this suit with no pockets <laughs> <laughs> what was i thinking only the women's outfits don't have pockets well they have fake uh, pockets they have like the <laughs> a little slit you can put nothing in it is that a tissue in your pocket or <laughs> <laughs> all right so do i have to i have to roll to do that don't i uh, and i was typing jeff a message what are you doing andy uh, I am. Uh, I'm apparently rolling four die. I don't know why that keeps doing that. Stop. Does he have oh. to roll to put that? Oh, there's a double up. Do I, do I, have to, I do have to roll to put something in the pocket universe that I that I travel through, right? To put something in it? Yeah, I'm gonna oh. I'm gonna pop in, leave it, and pop back out. What the the box? Yeah. Okay. Uh, you you can just. Take it in your hand and shove it in your coat. Uh, yeah, that's is, what... is basically how that works. So yeah, so okay. you got a you got a double lot and you can store okay. it in there. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Finding it later may be a problem, but I, I can at least put it in there. It's kind of like car keys. <laughs> <laughs> All okay, right. So you got that stored. Okay. Right. I open a portal, a mirror, for us to go into connect to the dream dimension okay uh and i'm not going to make you roll for that one we can we can okay. go in well you haven't made it to limbo yet you got to get to uh wonderland first uh so you'll take the group into wonderland and if you want to describe what your wonderland looks like this is a perfect time to do that oh god um so we walk through the portal and we come out into um, a beautiful rose garden with roses that are um, 20 feet high and uh, we see a, a group of cards painting the roses red and they're singing and fumbling and um, I, I tell you guys just don't mind those guys they they do this all the time so we turn right or we turn right and then we go um, towards this beautiful um, tea party. And there's a little house sitting there. And so um, in that house, I, I think there, there may be a connection to the dream world through that section. Okay. And just uh, so you know that your denizens of um, Wonderland were, originally they were these horrific demonic blah, forms that you have now kind of reshaped through your magic, you know, into the, the characters that we're all familiar with in Alice Through the Looking Glass. But they still have this really kind of weird twisted look about them. So they're, they're just not quite right. Sorry. <laughs> oh, there's a kitty. Hi, kitty. 
Um, so yes, you're able to kind of pass through the Rose Garden and, and head to the passage that leads you to the Dreaming. Um, and it, you walk up to another uh, gigantic mirror portal uh, and then uh, attempt to pass through. Uh, and when you start to go through, you, Dana, you're usually the first one to go through because they're, they're your things. You literally walk into a wall, just pap, and probably bloody your nose just a little bit. It's locked. We can't get in. It's locked. <laughs> it's locked. We can't get in. <laughs> it's locked. What? <laughs> it's locked. We can't get in. She says she has snot. <laughs> Guys, we can't get in. <laughs> um, all right. Well, I guess that that solves that. <laughs> it, it, does and none of the rest of us have any other sort of interdimensional sorts of things, right? Is there a flower pot with a key under it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. what, are we, what are we trying to do? We're trying to go where? Trying to get into the dreaming, uh, dream slayer's realm. Mm. Can we open the portal, open the door, let us come and go once more? Okay, roll it. Uh, 31. That's not good, but it is green. It's green. Um, you see the mirror shimmer a bit and kind of wave almost like it's a, in kind of a liquidy kind of form. Uh, so if you want to try to walk through again, you may try. <laughs> Shard? Hey, I'll try again. All right, so try you take your hand and maybe reach through and, and, and you're able to, with pressure, push uh, into that realm uh, from here. Um, and then as your body continues to move through, uh, it's, it's like moving through molasses uh, to try to get into this, uh, which is not like, you know, any other uh, passage that you have ever had to take going into any other realm or just through your portals in general. Uh, so there's definitely something wrong here. Do I make it through? All the way um, through? Sure, yeah. Or am I stuck in this molasses? Mm -mm. No, you, you do make it through. You see, the rest of you see Dana pass through. Um, and Dana, once you get inside there, uh, you are met with like this torrential downpour uh, and wind uh, that is trying to force you back through that portal. And you'll need to make um, an endurance feat. So that's E on your FASE list there. A.M. Is that amazing? Amazing. Mm -hmm. I got a 30. Okay. And then um, it says E amazing and then 50 is what that says. Mm -hmm. So it looks like you just barely got into the green there. Uh, and that wind is so forceful, it's pushing you right back through. You don't fly through, uh, but it forces you back through that portal. Uh, and, sure. and back really into one. Pulled her back out. It threw her back, well, pushed her back out. Oh. Something does not want us in there. I couldn't stay. Um, it's pouring down rain, wind. That's, I couldn't see anything darkness and rain. You definitely are not wanted in there. Hmm. Any other options? Anybody? Well, what is our goal here? Are we trying to find Chris? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think we're, you know, before we 
go go All someplace right. that we we don't know about yet you know maybe exhausting our options here um seeing if we can either find him in the dreaming or trying to contact him telepathically if, if I, i'll be able to find him story, well, i think go... telepathically is the best next option maybe what's that yeah. reach out telepathically to you somehow uh, if that doesn't work, maybe we should find his physical body. I try to reach out to you telepathically and just see if you're like you're if you are probably I don't know how what my distance is, but I'd say if you're in the city, I could find you in the in the region. Okay, so you're wanting to go back to Evansville to try to do that then. Is that correct? So where are we right now? Where are we in the limbo right now? Where are we right now? In Alice yeah. in Wonderland? World? Yeah, in, in I'm not uh, gonna do it there, but wherever when we wherever we or we can come out wherever you guys want. Let's go. Like I've said, I mean, do we need to go somewhere that has a very strong connection to him, a specific place? Would that help you? Yeah, and Andy had a, a yeah. good idea. Like, is is Tyner's physical body somewhere, or is is he like lock, stock, and barrel in in that dimension? <laughs> I um, just, does he too there. have does he too have brain cloud <laughs> in, in the early days uh dream slayer was able to basically send his spirit into the dream realm um but as he matured and really became one with that world he can physically move his body uh in and out of that realm okay so so he's probably in there. All right. Well, let's. Um, what What would be a good a good spot, Dana, as you suggested that where where he would have we would have some sort of connection that might strengthen what what Kurt's trying to do. Well, if you really want to do it, we go see Professor X at Cerebro and we do it there. It'll be global. You want to do that? Let's do that. He's a friend of mine. We know each other well. <laughs> and Christy, you have a direct uh, way to get there as well, if you recall. Do you remember that? What we talked about two weeks ago? In the forest adjacent to the Fermi Lab. Yes. Mm -hmm. There's a door, a portal of some sort. Yes. Yeah. That, take, that will take you to the island of Krakoa where the X-Men are now located. Oh, damn, I was thinking we were just going to Westchester. <laughs> <laughs> they are now a sovereign nation living on a living island. Called they better have but, So before we, go, before we go there, I've got a contact with Dr. Strange, and he's in New York City. We could see if he could contact Chris mystically that way. I'm down hey, for whatever. Dr. Strange and you got me. <laughs> Say that again? How would you want to go see Dr. Strange and you got me? <laughs> <laughs> All so right, good point. Good Plenty point. Strange for us. <laughs> <laughs> All right. To the okay. X-Men it is. To the X-Men? Yep. All right, so. Pull up there. Yep, Dana, you will transport the group then to Chicago or just outside of Chicago to uh, Fermi Lab. And what's the name of the uh, wilderness uh, um, oh, preserve up there? The Valley. Let me take a look. Okay. It's uh, just right by Batavia, Illinois. Um, Just for the record, I always hated dealing with the X-Men earlier. <laughs> you guys are snob. <laughs> yeah, that's all right. We we probably don't need to know the name. Uh, we go to the woods. <laughs> <laughs> Taking the CTA to the end of the line, regardless. <laughs> um, so, in this little wilderness preserve outside of Fermi Labs, um, 
there is a, a beautiful garden uh, that has been planted there uh, by members of the X-Men that houses uh, a portal to the island of Krakoa, uh, which is the new home of the X-Men. Uh, now, Christy, you've been there, I'm sure, uh, on several occasions, and you do know that the, the process of going there is rather instantaneous, but it only works for those with the mutant gene. So only the mutants in the party would be able to accompany you there. So that would mean that Andy and Mike would not be able to uh, make that journey with you. It'll take us three minutes. We'll just go knock on the door, ask you Cerebro, do it and come right back. Wait a second, earlier everybody was telling me not to split the group up, so. <laughs> Thanks. Them, them's the rules. <laughs> <laughs> I can fly there. I can fly there. So well, I, I can stay. I can stay behind and look at the box. And yeah, my yeah. and Mike and I, I, you know, I don't know what I have repair and tinkering. So uh, maybe uh, uh, we yeah. can we can fidget <laughs> with the box between the two of us. We'll fi we'll get, we'll figure it out and one way or the other. We won't do anything bad. We'll be fine while you guys are away. <laughs> Just wait here in the forest. <laughs> don't touch anything <laughs> at the end of the line. <laughs> Okay, so are my three mutants then heading to Krakoa? I guess so. Okay. All right, so you guys step through that portal and uh, are uh, you exit out into onto uh, a beautiful beach uh, in a wonderful paradise, uh, jungle up ahead and so forth, uh, and greeting you there. Uh, there are two mutants uh, that are sitting on a dock there at the, uh, at the ocean and fishing. Uh, one of which is Kitty Pride, or now Kate Pride. Uh, and interestingly enough, Ileana Rasputin, uh, who is the mistress of Limbo. Kind of your sister of in arms, Dana. Uh, and, and she sees the three of you exit the portal, uh, and da uh, Ileana rushes towards you, Dana, and, and gives you a great big bear hug, picks you up. Have a big uh, punch. <laughs> <laughs> I just wasn't sure. <laughs> uh, and she says, sister, what brings you here? We need to uh, see, use Cerebro. We're trying to find... Um, our comrade, Chris Tyner. The Dream Slayer, has something happened to him? We cannot find him. We tried to enter uh, his dream realm and we, I was pushed back out. I, I wasn't allowed in. We cannot reach him. We all had a, a dream simultaneously of horrible things happening to him and we don't know why. You attempted to get into the dream realm through one of your portals? We did. I had a, um, a connection there. I wasn't sure if it was still open, but we tried it and it didn't work. So we thought we'd reach out telepathically. Sorry, I can't type and, uh, and speak <laughs> at the same time. <laughs> um, the, uh, your portals are almost as strong as mine. You know, perhaps I might be able to get you in. I, mine are not much more powerful than yours, but I could certainly try. If you would like to try, I wouldn't argue. Okay. Well, she conjures up a, uh, a portal herself. Now, hers are more like discs, um, like discs of light. Uh, and hers forms but then it starts to sputter and then you see it crack and just poof, just explode and she, her eyes go wide and she says well that is something that has never happened before something is definitely trying to keep us out and keep us away from from chris we've got to find out what it is all right then we're going to need to go inland i'll, I'll take you to see charles 
Thank you. Dear sister. All right, so she leads you into the forest and um, uh, you come upon a, a, a village uh, that is extremely kind of high tech uh, looking, you know, for, uh, for something that seems like it should just be, you know, an, an abandoned uh, island. Um, and there's a, a, a fire going in the middle and just about every mutant you can think of uh, is here on this island. And I'm talking not only about the X-Men proper, such as Wolverine and Gambit and Rogue and Storm and the ones that we all think of, but you also see Mr. Sinister, you see Apocalypse, uh, you see Sabretooth, uh, mortal enemies of the X-Men as well, all living there in unison and in harmony with one another. Uh, and for those of you that are in the know, this is really unique and unheard of, uh, but something has brought the entire mutant race together. Um, and she leads you to um, a large meeting room uh, that has uh, four desks uh, with three chairs at each of the uh, each of the desks and seated uh, behind one of the tables is Charles Xavier and Eric Lyncher uh, Magneto. Uh, now Charles uh, doesn't look the way that we probably remember him uh, back in the day, uh, a frail old man sitting in a wheelchair. Uh, he now is in a sleek black uh, suit, almost like unitard almost, and what looks to be like a cer cerebral helmet over his head. And he stands. Yes. Quite a long time. He stands as you come in and he looks at you. Mr. Wooten, it has been quite a long time. You are right. It has. Yeah. I use the, you know, your little guy. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> hey, well, you got to be more specific then. <laughs> Dude, you know. Hi, Jeff. Hi, Jeff. Yeah. <laughs> sorry. There he is. There are, you in, are you in your car? <laughs> I'm having volume issues. I apologize. Um, I can barely hear you, uh, but I am uh, <laughs> playing Marvel. Just... <laughs> there we are. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I'm so sorry. When I logged in, my phone was doing weird things and would not let me talk uh, or see you guys. I mean, I could see you, but you could see me. Well, it's good to see you and welcome. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> great to see you guys. And I don't know why the audio keeps going in and out. All right, I did this with my son, like remotely and it worked so i expected it to work today and it didn't i'm sorry no that's all right no we're we're glad to have you just don't have a wreck on the way here <laughs> <laughs> right. oh, he oh there he is okay cool well um i've been listening it sounds great <laughs> <laughs> <It's> like fun <laughs> well we'll get you caught up here in just a minute so just be safe as you're driving of course, yeah, no, and I wasn't, I wasn't going to drive while we were doing this. I was just, like, trying to get to a better location, because I'm out in the middle of nowhere. I'm near, I, I'm actually now in Yucca Valley, uh, which is outside Joshua Tree, so, oh. yeah, that's where my life took me today. <laughs> so I apologize. I apologize. Well, thanks for joining us. Of course. So okay. I will get settled in now that I actually have this working. All right. So, uh, Kurt, uh, you, you had asked whether or not maybe you could use Cerebro. Um, and Xavier looks at you and he says, well, whatever for, Kurt? Well, we have an incident around our friend Chris, who seems to have been. Well, we're not sure what's happened to him. We all had a, well, we tell him the story. I'm not going to tell the story. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and I catch him up to date on the story and, uh, and say, I just need it for a moment, if you don't mind. Uh, you know, I'll be careful with it. Well, that is a big ask. But uh, if I can trust someone, I know that I can trust you. 
and he takes the helmet off of his head and it is the Xavier that you remember. Um, but just maybe a little younger than what you remember. Uh, Prof, you're looking really good these days, I must say. Well, Krakoa has done wonders for me. I must say it has. Why didn't we get the memo? I sent you a memo. You chose not to come. Oh, yeah. Uh, all right, here we go. Let's have a go at this. Look, I'll try not to, to this hopefully won't get out of control like last time. Now, since you did fill him in on exactly what had happened, he does warn you that it's highly unlikely you'll be able to contact your friend. Uh, if he is not on this plane of reality, even I, a telepath with as, as much experience as I have had, cannot reach across dimensions with, with my telepathy, even with Cerebro. Uh, so I don't want you to get your hopes up in, in thinking that you might be able to contact him through here, but if you want to try, you, you are more than welcome. Can I take, can I astrally project with Cerebro? Yeah, you can astrally project, yes. With Cerebro? Mm hmm so why don't I just, you know, go walk through a few dimensions with it? Well, that's a possibility, yes. All right, let's give a go at that. I mean, you know, the professor, not quite as capable as me. <laughs> I'm ready to go. You ready to go? I'm ready to go. Make that roll. So you're going to do that then under astral projection. Yeah. Uh, no, I'd rather, well, I want to check it out here first. I'm going to okay. do it. You want, you want to do telep telepathy first? Yeah, let me see if we can find you here first. Okay. Oh, that's a nice roll on monster. Let's see, that gives me something like, that. I mean, yellow, yellow, definitely yellow. Yep. Okay. Yellow. So reaching out with your mind uh, telepathically, you're not able to pinpoint me anywhere on the earth plane. You see, you know, Again, every mutant that you can think of, every super powered being that you can think of that you've ever run into, you sense everything. Uh, and nowhere on this earth can you find Chris Tyner. All right, well, let's try to astrally project with it. I don't know if this has ever been done before. Okay. Where am I going? Which astral plane should I go to? Well, uh, probably to the dreaming. Dreaming? All right, let's do this. This could be bad. You All might right. want to yell out karma before you do this. <laughs> <laughs> let's do karma. On that. Otherwise, yeah. I might get All right. All right, I'm heading out to dreaming. That's right. And yep. I'm going to actually project with Cerebro mm -hmm. on my head. Yep. Let's see if we can make this work. Now, what is your astral projection? Amazing. Okay, so Cerebro gives you a plus three column shift. So to it's gonna, right uh -huh, that's going to put you to the right. So it'll put that's you unearthly. unearthly. I'm unearthly. When, you're at amazing to start, right? No. So that would put you at shift X. Shift X. That's, that's cool. All right, here I go. Are you ready, everybody? All right. I don't even need to use karma shift. Well, I'll use it. Yeah, I'll use it. 10 karma. Yep. Oh, good thing I used it. Uh, it gets me into <laughs> Get you into the green? Well, I was, I rolled a 21, so. Okay. Um, yeah, you were green already, so you can bump it to yellow if you want. All right, I'll bump it to yellow. Okay, so spend the appropriate amount to get you to, on shift X, it looks like that is 36. There you go. Okay. Hope I don't break. Yeah. So you're able to pass through the dimensions and get you to the dreaming. And, and once you reach the cusp of that dimension, you feel the same thing that Dana did. You feel this push back uh, that's trying to shove you out of there. But since you're not really in a physical form, you're able to just get in and, and really witness what it is that, that is going on in there. Um, and you feel, uh, that torrential rain that Dana felt, you feel the wind, 
um, you see the thunder and the lightning that is that is going on in there right now. And in the midst of all of this, there's a gigantic being um, that is humanoid in form, uh, but its limbs are elongated and end in great talons. Uh, and it is jet black. Uh, and it has these this gigantic maw of gnashing teeth and red eyes. Uh, and it is stirring all of this uh, up within the within the realm. Uh, for what purpose it's hard for you to to tell. Uh, and it's very difficult for you to maintain your form while you're in here. Can I throw my billy club at it? Um, okay, okay. So I, any, any sign of you though, of Chris, of the character, do I have any mental map or any connection in there? Of um, you can now roll your telepathy. And again, this is at a plus three column shift. So if your telepathy is monstrous, that puts you at one, two, three, shift Y. Yeah, I'm not even using whatever on that one. All right, let's just do that. All right, here we go. 83. That's got to be, that's red. Okay. Yeah, I'm really red. Um, somewhere within all of this swirling and, and, uh, and rain and wind and so forth, you just get a very faint feeling, a presence uh, that you can associate with Chris. And it seems to be at the core, like in, in the heart of whatever this gigantic creature thing is. All right. Um, and you hear uh, almost in, in a whisper, Kurt, no. I say, Chris, it's fine, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> Hang in there a little bit longer. <laughs> you have to go. All right, I'm heading out. We'll be back. Take care of yourself. All right, we get out of there. Oh, it's <laughs> actually leaving. <laughs> we get out of there. I get out of there and come back and I tell everybody the story. It looks like Chris is not in the best of shape probably in the heart of some sort of Lovecraftian monster, talons and stuff like that. Uh, but he's there. We're going to have to like eventually try to figure a way to get him out of there. I told him we'd come back for him. Tried to throw my billy club, but it didn't work very well. <laughs> so you say he was, he seemed like he was within the center of this monstrous Entity? Um, Hard to say. Physically, probably not, but probably a piece of him, of his soul, of his spirit, of his mind is inside of it at least. Did you feel that he was alone or that there were others that were also a part of that? Just connected to him. You, uh, let, me, let me interject there, Kurt. Um, when you felt him, it was really reaching through the consciousness of all individuals on earth that were dreaming so yes, a lot of others. yeah a lot of others millions so it wasn't just the girlfriend that you had before kelly right I was trying to that <laughs> you had a crazy girlfriend and i was like maybe that's what he's getting <laughs> oh no he's he's recalling the fetus <laughs> <laughs> I'm coming back now. <laughs> but thanks for bringing that up. It's like floods of memories. <laughs> I can't remember her name, but uh, you hang on to that for like the whole time here. You <laughs> say nothing, and then zing. <laughs> it, it is she who shall not be named. <laughs> Oh, my word. <laughs> it's funny. Okay, so we don't, we know he's 
inside this creature and we can feel him through or he uh kurt felt him through the others other dreamers is that what you meant yes okay we just don't know if you're physically in there but we assume you are because mm -hmm. you can do that yep we're gonna have to open this damn box anybody <laughs> <laughs> nobody <laughs> well remember, remember mike and i are standing in the I know. <laughs> just getting caught up <laughs> <Another mute. laughs> nice night there yeah it's beautiful <laughs> and we're it's getting really younger tranquil. the longer we stay on the island so let's <laughs> <laughs> what do you think kurt um what do i think i have no idea am i the only one who can change things molecularly yes would that be something that might help change this sort of maelstrom into something that we could actually find the presence of you? I don't know. <laughs> well, this thing, ah. I'm thinking back to all the Nolan movies I've seen. Yeah, and in the meantime, we can we can get Jeff uh, up to Chicago somehow. So <laughs> I'm not even there. That's good to know. That's fine. <laughs> Mom, well, I say we reconvene with the group. Let's get everybody together and let's figure this out. So first, let's go back and meet, get back with Arsenal Spartan, and uh, let's get let's get let's get everybody together. How's that sound? We've had enough time on this tropical, lovely island. So the X Men wish you well and and uh, wish you luck in the search for your companion. Doctor, it's been a pleasure. Kurt, once once again, good to see you. You're always welcome here. Thank All you. of you are welcome here. And thanks for letting me go on a little trip with Cerebro. I know how important that thing is to you. I just appreciate that you didn't break it. No. Well, <laughs> All right, so you guys heading back to uh, the Chicago area? Yeah. Oh, and okay. Magneto, great to see you again as well. As always, glad we're not killing each other this time. And Dana, you get a text from Jeff and, and basically says, come pick me up <laughs> so you can get him on the way. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's only 8.30 where I am and we were supposed to meet at nine. I don't know what the problem was. <laughs> outside of joshua tree so oh, we'll okay all right so you got the whole crew back there uh near fermi lab in northern illinois well what'd you guys learn yeah <laughs> we'll tell you everything we learned <laughs> well so I, I i think it's it's pretty apparent that uh we're we can't really get to where Chris is by ways that we, we already know, like so, something's keeping us out of there or, or is powerful enough to keep us out of there or condition conditions are such that, that we can't get there. Um, do we want to, do we, we want to try the box? <laughs> What's in the box? Come on, what's in the box? <laughs> Just tell me what's in the box. <laughs> we gotta do something with the box. That's all we got. Let's do the box. Andy, you still got the box? I still have the box. All right. Well, I, I don't have a better idea, unfortunately, but I'm remembering that dream um, that sort of launched this whole thing. And um, Tyner was filled with like, regret that we had been involved it seemed and he was kind of pushing us away and that's the same message that Kurt got in the dreaming when he said no you know so I can't I can't help I've got this spidey sense 
that this is we're doing the wrong thing <laughs> like we're we're falling yeah. into a trap we're going down the wrong path good what what kind of superhero friends would we be if we didn't try to rescue our friend Krista <laughs> and take the wrong way, path it should be noted I was quoting Brad Pitt from seven when I said, <laughs> oh we're gonna find out what's in the box I wasn't suggesting we necessarily see what's in the box <laughs> It's too late now. <laughs> okay. So we're saying we just drop it and just let Tyner deal with it. We all go home. <laughs> and that's the end of our adventure. Good night. Guys. <laughs> well done. <laughs> all the twists and turns. I never knew what was coming next. <laughs> go get some cinnabons. <laughs> <laughs> God. I don't have a better idea. I'm just going on the record. I'm, I'm just saying, Tyner said, don't do it. <laughs> what else are we going to do? We don't have anything else to do. That's why we're all here. We could all like go to sleep and like cuddle with each other. And then if we all have the same dream, maybe we would all travel there with him. Wait, did you say cuddle with each other? <laughs> like, like spoon? I, yeah, spoon. But I think closer. I mean, imagine the power that it has when you're far apart. Just think of what all <laughs> That's a good point, though. Doesn't somebody else have dream capabilities besides Tyner? Uh, I don't think so. Protection possibilities. I don't know if you call that dream. Really, the only one that could potentially do that uh, is is Christy. Mm -hmm. Could do what? Dream. She 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 could she could dream travel. I mean, she has access to just about any power within the Ultimate Powers book, so. Can she take us with her? It, I can't help it, but the mental vision of all of these costume characters laying in this <laughs> dark wood, spooning, spooning next to one another. <laughs> Some hiker's gonna come by and be like, what the? What? We're gonna get arrested. We're just doing the thing. <laughs> I could go to sleep and we could all stand around and watch. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's not creepier. That's not creepier at all. No, that's good. I think that would work. It's much better. Can she take us with her? Do we know that? Would I know that? Does anybody know that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. She she could do that. Yeah, that's what I was suggesting. So let's go to sleep. And Christy, you can take us somewhere. Yeah. Okay. She's I writing. Got... We need a vamp. She's writing a poem, I think. <laughs> <laughs> was... Christy's writing a poem. We need to vamp. <laughs> yeah, Hold yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, I've got something that I had been writing, thinking about Dream Slayer um, and, and about the way that. Is it her ear pronounced Psyghost? Is it? Yeah, yeah. Okay. The way Psyghost was about to try to drop in and find and find um, Dream Slayer. But this could sort of be repurposed to cover the whole team, sort of including Dream Slayer. So I would say if we're going to try to sleep, you know, friends that sleep together and dream together, stay together and something together. Anyway, what I was going to say was, um, I'm trying to figure out. That sounds like a bad tagline for a movie. <laughs> Maybe a porn movie. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Took a turn. <laughs> so I'm going to change the his to there and try to cover everybody. But in some of this, um, it's really meant for it's meant for Dream Slayer because we're trying to access him basically. So calm our breathing, calm our pulse, protect our spirits, ease our pain, his pain. Reveal his psyche, what he would, and bring us safely back again. <laughs> ah. Excellent. <laughs> All right, so uh, roll your uh, reality alteration. I said karma, right? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> That's 
I thought I heard. Um, 31. Okay. That puts you in the green, so you can spend however many points you need to get to 46 to get to yellow. How do I do that math? It's 31 to 46. We can do this with our costumes on, right? Sure. Just checking. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what? what were you? <laughs> Although it might if I'm wearing your costume. <laughs> I'll just change costume. Now, Christy, in order for you to do this, the others do have to be asleep. Um, so are we just crashing in the woods? I think we should. <laughs> <laughs> There's a shady hotel down the block. <laughs> and Andy and I went and got coffee while you guys were in there. <laughs> So, you know. A double shot espresso because we didn't know how long. Yeah, it was, so. yeah. <laughs> we're actually very close to the um, the outdoor training grounds where the the the, um, the strange, strange academy. academy does their their training, their trust falls, and you know how to light <laughs> a fire. <laughs> so there are cabins um, that we can get to. Okay. All right, so you guys uh, convened one of the cabins and then attempt to go to sleep. Um, How many beds are there in the cabin, Chris? Oh, uh, two, there's two enough. Queen. <laughs> two, two queen size. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's it's a, in the it's a double queen suite. <laughs> Whether I'm sleeping on a bed or the floor, that's really important. <laughs> that's why we're foodie. <laughs> it's just for space. Oh, it's just like old times. Whose arm is this? Those aren't pillows. <laughs> That's not an arm. <laughs> okay, so um, you guys all attempt to go to sleep and she recites her poem uh, and you close your eyes and try as you might each and every one of you you cannot fall asleep um, there's something that's preventing you from actually going to sleep all right back to the great work <laughs> damn box all right it's probably the espresso you brought, you drank. Right, we're all connected and the caffeine kept us all awake. Sorry, we didn't know. <laughs> all right, so we're gonna try to figure this box in. It seems like it's our only option at this point. And Christy, through the magic that you just uh, attempted to cast, uh, I think you do get a feeling that does come back to you uh, and something, something catches your attention uh, as you're casting that or as you're trying to sleep, uh, you know, along with the rest of the, uh, of the group. And the, the feeling is, is that the folks that are within this hemisphere that are asleep maybe can't wake up. So the ones that are asleep right now are maybe not coming back anytime soon not waking anytime soon that means there's a rift between the dream dreaming world and the waking world the people that are asleep can't the people that are awake can't go to sleep and the people that are asleep can't wake up so that that barrier that we encountered trying to get to Chris otherwise is it's not just keeping us out of there like the whole the whole thing's locked down I guess basically. it's everyone in the world you either got stuck in your waking state or your sleeping state mm -hmm. so the question is how long can a normal human being survive without sleeping well we better get to work I guess we gotta go fast Oh, the longest recorded time without sleep is approximately 264 hours. Not bad. That gives us some time. We got almost <laughs> 10 days. <laughs> Plenty oh. of time. 
three or four nights, you start to hallucinate. So if, if it's true, that's the entire plan, not just us. We will start to hallucinate, as will the entire plan in three or four nights if we don't get if we don't take care of this. Okay. All right. Do you, do you think that there's a safer place to open the box? Would it be safer in Wonderland or safer in this world or safer anywhere else you think of or anywhere as good as the next? I don't know if opening it in Wonderland is a great idea. Um, I mean, I can't, honestly, I can't remember for sure, but I seems like that's not a great idea. You're, you would be opening a portal to hell in a hell realm. <laughs> okay. Double hell. So either that means double hell or it's the perfect place. So let's try that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I'm getting it. I'm getting it. <laughs> let's try that if everyone agrees that that's a good idea. <laughs> sure. What do you think, Saigo? What does that sound like? What about you? You want to open it here? Try what? What do you want to try? No, let's open it try it in Wonderland. What do you think, Jeff? But that seems like a bad idea. <laughs> Unless, is it, is it kind of like Bizarro World, where bad is good and good is bad? So hell could be heaven? Uh oh. See, that's what happens. You start even thinking. <laughs> keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Can't even plan it. It's so bad. Oh. <laughs> yep. Wonderland limbo is a hell realm. So if we open up a portal to hell in a hell realm, it's probably okay. Oh. Is it? <laughs> like how much worse could it get? How much worse like, could yeah. it get? It's your AT that's... double hockey sticks. <laughs> double hell. That's what it I is. guess as long as we're right here, we're very close to the portal back to um Krakoa. What do you call it? Krakoa, yeah. yeah. I, th I thought you just said Ricola. Ricola. Like, Ricola. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's. We're the enforcement we can get there, I suppose. The only other option would be is if we had some sort of magic damping room back at headquarters or there at the Strange Academy. that could contain a device like this? Or we could just get it over with, open it here in the cabin in the woods. What could go wrong? <laughs> we don't want to over the box. Touch <laughs> <laughs> <Stretch> it out. <laughs> Damn it. Kurt is following the 1980s horror movie paradigm of <laughs> big... <laughs> Is there a room full of us? We can open it in? A room full of what? Chainsaws. That was joking. chainsaws. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> All right. Well, it's up to you guys where you want to open it, or do you want to open it? You don't <laughs> want to open it. <laughs> Obviously not. Open the damn box. Let's open it. All right. Let's do it here. Let's see what happens. Let's just do it. So, so we got the roll. Uh, yeah, since you've got the uh, repair tinker, it sounds like you've probably got the uh, the best chance Dang. of doing it. <laughs> so you're going to roll reason plus one column shift with your repair tinker. Okay. So, hold on. There's your four dice again. <laughs> I don't know why. I keep hitting two die. I don't know what's going on. There's four die again. Let's try this. Well, uh, you you what? Don't hit the don't hit the two. Hit the D one hundred, and that will just roll just by one. itself. Yeah. Oh, there we go. So sixty three. And what was it? Uh, uh, reason plus reason. one column shift. Okay, wow. so remarkable. I am in the yellow. Okay, is your no, reason? I'm in the green. Your reason is remarkable. Uh huh. Okay, so you're gonna do plus one. Oh column no, shift. no, hold on. Our my reason's excellent. Okay, plus okay. one column shift is remarkable, remarkable. So okay, 
and then the green. Okay. All right. So you fiddle with the box a little bit, uh, and uh, it begins to click and whir. And uh, as you complete the ritual of the lament configuration, the box springs to mechanical life and crackles with an unholy blue energy. <clears throat> it separates along the intricate design which, with the two halves twisting around the center circle and resets itself into a new formation. And when the box lo locks into place, the room begins to shake as cracks begin to form in the walls, spewing forth the same blue aura that brought the box to life as a thin mist fills the room. Directly in front of you, where the cracks converge, the wall splits, and just like the box before it, opens up to reveal several figures making their way into this plane of existence. The horrors that emerge are led by a creature hideous to behold a legless naked torso that moves by walking on its hands, expertly, expertly balancing itself after likely decades of practice. This thing possesses no eyes where they once were having been sewn shut ages ago, causing the flesh to graft over the, so the sockets. Its lips are peeled back with hooks attached to the back of its head, giving it a sickening grin as it chatters its yellow teeth. Following the torso are a pair of twin female figures. These are the wire twins, a pair of lustful dominatrixes with alabaster skin whose faces bear only a passing resemblance to human features, as though a demented artist had crudely carved them from hardened clay. The pair are attached together like a pair of co-joined twins, their flesh fused together with, in a gnarly twisted pattern. And finally, the entrance reveals the most heinous of all the figures who seems to almost float into the room under the power of what looks like almost a scorpion tail or a tentacle attached to its head. Some of you may have faced the Cenobite before, Dr. Chenard, a former demented physician addict, addicted to, excuse me, addicted to painkillers and trappings of the flesh. In life, he used his knowledge of medicine to make sacrifices to Leviathan in an effort to unlock secrets of eternal life. He received his wish, just not in the way that he hoped. For now, he spends eternity continuing his gruesome work obtaining souls for his master. And I will share with you these horrible images. There's the torso. And did the wire twins come up for you? Not yet. Okay. Nope. Save the torso. All right, I'm going to have to do it this way. There you go. Ew. There's them. And you know there, there's Dr. Chenard. Good looking group. What's hilarious is when we were discussing whether to open the box or not, none of us said, Anybody see the Hellraiser movies? <laughs> <laughs> We're all thinking it. <laughs> Dr. Chenard addresses the gathering. <laughs> what fools these mortals be. You have opened the box yet again. Twice. You have called forth the, ser the servants of Leviathan. Only once has one of your own escaped our clutches. You know in your hearts it is not hands nor magic which summons us. It is desire. What is your pleasure? Uh, well, Jeff it? wanted to open the box. <laughs> <laughs> this guy, am I right? Everybody points to me? Is that what happens? <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> 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 well, we're we're uh, looking for a friend of ours. Uh, 
Dream Slayer. I think you've encountered before. Yes, I know the Dream Slayer. He is not with us. Do you know where he is? And why would I know this? I don't know. You're in some kind of weird place that like seems like you're in the box seems like like you're in the box (laughs) you're you're, you know this seems like the kind of thing you'd know box and no other ideas (laughs) that's that's all we got we got the box you have called us we have come there is a price to pay and one of you shall pay with your flesh who will it be Can we all point to Jeff again? <laughs> <laughs> and you can see the uh, the torso now kind of making its way towards you and, and Dr. Chenard is floating in your direction. Uh, and it seems as though perhaps a battle might be imminent. Um, unless we close the box. <laughs> <laughs> Quick, close the box. <laughs> He tried turning it off and on again. <laughs> uh, now, for the record, it is 11 o'clock, so uh, we are getting ready to go into a battle here. Um, do we want to proceed with the battle, or should we call it for tonight and then reconvene uh, in two weeks? It, it, it might be better for me if we if we <laughs> pause here and mm-hmm. then and then get into it. But I'd... it's it's a good cliffhanger, so yeah. we'll we'll leave it at that. Quite a while, probably. So. Yeah, yeah, definitely. All right, could. I can um, I can generate a pause for you. Okay. That allows us to maybe go first when we come back, and that okay. is, the gate to hell has opened wide. Our fault. That's fair. Not another word. For such time as we need, my friends remain unseen, unsensed, unheard. Ah, okay. So you're casting in an, 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 an invisibility spell, it sounds like. Yep. Okay. Uh, so roll your uh, your power. Does it help if we snap while she does it? It might yeah. have, but now it's too late because it's 17. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that, poet. And that's on, mon- on Monstrous. Yeah. This, this may be your last time that I'll, gi- I'll give you a, you can call karma after the fact if you want to do that. I don't know if it makes a difference. We're about to take a break now, but okay. <laughs> All right. I'll do karma. All right. Uh, when, when we reconvene in two weeks, then everyone will be invisible. <laughs> and right before we all go silent, you hear my character say, I told you we should have watched the movie. <laughs> <laughs> and scene. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, everybody. All right, thanks. Be safe. All right. Peace.